I just want
sense it could be good, but I think the likes of Tavernier and Rothwell are really just players who, when they go down, if they go down, will be good in the championship. And I don't think they're strengthened enough. They're not really spending too much money either, so I'm going to have to put it in trash. I just think they needed more, and they really could have showed a little bit more ambition in the transfer window and spent a bit more money trying to get the players to keep them up. Next up, we will go for another promoter, so we'll go for Fulham. Fulham have signed Joao Polina from Sporting Lisbon, which I think will be one of the signings of the summer. He started off fantastically. He sent the off from West Ham, who, I mean, that is not a good signing. 16 mil, and he's looked awful. Andres Pereira, who looks like he's found some form. Kevin and Babu, Carlos Vinicius, Bern Leno, William, Levin Casau, Dan James, Shane Duffy, Manuel Solomon. See, this is what we're talking about. Fulham has shown ambition to try and stay up. Just more of them haven't really. They got rid of Sambo and Kisa. That was going out there. I'm saying with Fabio Carvalho um, and got rid of a bit of dead with the likes of Seri Molson, Joe Bryan, Congolo. But I think this is a decent window. I think decent from Fulham. I think players like Willian, Levin Kazawa, Shane Duffy, they're not really great, but. They give experience. The likes of Joao Bellini are fantastic signings. I think it's not very good because I think they could have done a little bit more. A little bit more from Fulham's perspective. But it is a decent window and I think it might be enough to keep them up in the division. We'll go to one of the big boys now. We'll go for Liverpool. They've signed Darwin Nunes, of course. Fabio Carvalho, Calvin Ramsey and Arda Mello. Got rid of Sadio Mane, obviously. Nico Williams, uh, Minamino, Diva Corrigi. Now, in terms of Darwin Nunes, they are overpaid, but I think he will come good in the long run. Fabio Carvalho looks like a bargain. I picked him out in my predictions as the breakout star of the season. Calvin Rams, he's been injured, but he'll come good when he's back. And Arta Mello, I mean, I'm not keen on that. I've seen him at Juve and he was rubbish. He may come good on the club system, but he doesn't really look like a club, club player. And I really think they needed to address that midfield with a bit more of a better signing. But I understand why they've gone for a short term one. Um, I'm going to put it in average or decent. I think because they lost Sadio Mane, I'm going to have to put it in average. Um, obviously they got Nunes in but losing Mane you've seen the impact of it I know it was kind of out of their hands because it did seem like he wanted to move but that's a big loss so I'm going to put him an average next we'll go for Newcastle they've signed Alexander Isak I think they've paid way too much for him but he looks like he'll be a good signing Sven Botman which I'm really impressed with Target. Nick Pope looks like a parking mess well. Again, got rid of a bit of Deadwood, Liza Kieran Clark, Isaac Hayden, and Dwight Gale. I think it would have been a very good if they had paid a little bit less for Alexander Isaac. I think they paid a bit too much for him. However, I think it will be amazing. I really like the Sven Bogman one and the Nick Pope one. I like how they haven't just splashed cash on any old player. They've been very particular in who they've signed. But I think they could have done a little bit more, personally. Um, maybe bring in another midfielder. So that's why I'll put in decent. Um, and as I said, I think they have paid a little bit too much for Isaac. Even though I think it will be a good signing. Next, we'll go to probably the Kilwakers one. This list, Leicester, trash, sold Wesley Fafana for very good money at least, but they didn't invest any of it, they bought Wood Fears, Stadlin, uh, for 15 million, you may turn out good, but that's literally it, they lost Kasper Schmeichel, who, I mean, he was on the decline, but selling him is a bit baffling, yeah, I don't really need to say too much about Leicester, just Next, we'll go for Leeds. Now, Leeds is an interesting one. Fifth, signed Brandon Harrison, Lewis.
with Sinister and Tyler Adams, Christensen, Mark Rocker, Wilfred Ganondo, and Kiabo, and also Joel Roberts. Now, I will say, Wilfred Ganondo is one for the future. Look out for him. I was so shocked when they signed him. Um, because I remember him coming on for Italy, I think, against England. He was fantastic, and he's only like 17. Now, they did lose Rafinha and Calvin Phillips, but I think they got good money for both of them. And the players they've bought in, I think they've future proved themselves. The likes of Sinistera and Brandon Harrison, they're all really young. And they look like they've settled in well, so I'm going to go very good for Leeds. Similar to Brighton, got very good fees for their breakout uh, big players. And then they've replaced them with good young talents. So I will go for very good transfer window for Leeds. Next up, we will go with we should we go, with, we'll go for Southampton. Southampton, um, similar to Leeds, they've kind of future proved themselves. Bought in Gavin Basnews, Sekumara, Romeo Lavia, Shaletta Cobb, Bella Cobb, Joe Aribo, Larios, Liz, Samuel Dozy, and Maitland Niles. Don't really lose too many players either. I mean, I think this is a window where in five years we'll look back on and be like, wow, what a window. And they made like a hundred mil profit on these players. They're all really young and look really good. Especially Armand Belakov Jam. I've been so impressed with him. He looks incredible. I can definitely see him getting a big move soon. And while I think in the short term they might struggle, as they are really young, as I said, I think this could be a window where you look back on and it's just like, wow, amazing players. So that's why I'm actually going to put it incredible. I just think that these young players which have signed is so smart and I think it's going to pay dividends in the future. While it may not look incredible now, I think, as I said before, in five years it will look incredible. Next we'll go through another big boy, we'll go for Spurs. So they've signed Richarlison. I think they overpaid for him slightly. Romero on a permanent Eve Basuma, which I think is a good deal. Destiny Udeji, Jed Spence, Ivan Barisic, Clement Lockley, and Fraser Forster. They got rid of quite a bit of Deadwood. Likes of Stephen Bergwine, Sony Reg Regulon, and Tom Play, Harry Winks, La Celso. Although they loaned out most of them. So they didn't really generate too much funds from them. Now, I think they addressed a lot of areas which they needed. However, not all of them. I think they should have signed another centre-back. Because I'm not really convinced about Lachlan. I think they could have signed another midfielder. A bit more of a creative midfielder. Um, and I'm not convinced at the right wing-back situation as well. Jed Spence. It doesn't really seem to fit what Conte wants right now, not being given a chance. And I think they maybe should have signed a bit more of an experienced right wing back. So I'll put in decent. I like it. Um, I like also how they got their business done early, but I, I can't really justify being very good, to be honest. Next up, we'll go for West Ham. 
this one's weird. I guess I kind of have to put it in incredible. Fifth site. I'm not going to go through all the players. Because we'll be here for 10 years. But they've signed, I believe, 20. 20 players. Um, yeah. <laughs> I feel like we've done way too much. However, I think it has to be incredible because you can't fault the ambition. And I think a lot of these players, if they go down, they can sell for profit or keep and they'll have a core of players who are incredible for the championship. So it kind of has to be incredible. And I really do like the players that they've brought in. Next up, we will go for Manchester United. Signed Anthony, huge, huge overpayment. Casemiro, again, overpayment. Um, Martinez, Lissandra Martinez, I think they paid a bit too much for him as well. Tyron Malasia, Ericsson, and Dubravka. They got rid of, again, a bit of Deadwood, Pogba, Lingard, Kamani, Eric Bai, Alex Telles. Um, now, if I'm looking at the play, signed, like you literally just look at the players, they've addressed a lot of areas with good quality players and all of them would be very good, but <clears throat> I'm not just looking at the players, I'm looking at how much they spend on them, while I think all the players, as I said, are very good and will improve the team, I think they overpaid on a lot of them, and also I can't ignore the cleric of this one. For De Jong, for the whole summer, and didn't get their number one target. And then when they found out we couldn't get him, they panicked and they got Casemiro, who I think is a good player. Uh, but I think they paid a bit too much, and I can't ignore that, so I'm gonna drop it to decent. Um, I don't think it's average because, as I said, they've definitely improved their team a lot, but I can't really put it in very good. After all those things I've said, Next we'll go for Crystal Palace, Crystal Palace, now they have signed Jack Tugore, who looks like a fantastic player, Chris Richards from Bayern Munich, Sam Johnston and Mark Awobi, got rid of a couple of players like Benteke and Kiate, now they didn't actually do too much, I was a bit surprised by Crystal Palace, I think I'll put it in average just because of that, not really much going on here, Jack Tugore, nice signing. Chris Richards might turn out to be good, but that's really about it. I would have thought they'd done, should do a little bit more, but I guess they didn't really lose too much, they didn't need to do a lot. So I'll put it in average, I guess. Next up, we will go for the big spenders, the high spenders, Chelsea. Now this one is very interesting, so they've signed Wesley Fafana, Mark Gorilla, both of them huge overpayments. Raheem Sterling, Kaldu Kulabali, I think very good signings, decent price. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, Denis Zagaria, um, and then Connie Chukwemka, Gabriel Slonia, Cesar Casade, sorry. And they got rid of a lot of dead with the likes of Timo Werner, Romelu Lukaku, Marcus Alonso, even Abdu hudson Odoi, Ross Barkley, and many others. Now, this one is really tough. I would say it's similar to Man United. If you look at simply the players they brought in, Fafana, Kukurela, Sterling, Kulipali, Aubameyang, Zakaria, that is very good, maybe even incredible. They've addressed a lot of areas and they've got really quality signings. But, I have to look at the price they got They've overpaid on Fafana and Kukurela massively. Um, the others are decent price, so it drops them to a very good. And then I also have to look at, I guess, the scattergun approach. The fact that they basically went in for every single player in the world and then eventually landed on the players they did got in. Um, but having said that, I think I will keep it at 
not very good. Um, I just think the players they brought in massively improved the team. Um, and I also like the fact that they future proofed themselves by going and signing these young talents as well. Um, I think Koulibaly, Sterling, Kukurela, and Fafana, those four in particular, are amazing signings. And I think they'll do very well for Chelsea. Aubameyang, I think, will be effective in the short term and score goals. Zakaria, I'm not too convinced, but could potentially be a good option in the midfield. So, I think they are putting them very good. Next, we will go for Brentford. Brentford have signed Aaron Hickey, which fantastic signing. I think we'll go to a bigger club, to be honest. Key Lewis Potter. I think they overpaid a little bit, but he's a good younger player. They got Dam's goal, which I was surprised about again. I think that's a fantastic signing. As Strakosha and Ben Mee on a free, they didn't really lose anyone besides Christian Eriksen. I think I'll put it in very good for Brentford. Aaron Hickey, Kilo Spotter, and Dam's card. Three young, talented players who they can definitely sell on in the future for. experienced players who will provide instant impact and yeah I think it's a very good window overall for Brentford they didn't need to do too much and didn't do too much but when they did business they did it well Arsenal and so they've signed Gabriel Jesus and Alexander Sinjaka from Man City both of them incredible signings they look like they've done really well and settled in quick Fabio Vieira and Bordeaux, slight overpayment in my opinion. Matt Turner and Marquinhos as well. Mount Goings got rid of a lot of dead with the likes of Tavares, Pepe, Lacazette, Bellerin, Leno, Torreira, Mavropanos. They all left. Um, now, as much as I said, Jesus and Zinchuk are incredible signings and improved that team so much. They didn't really address every single area which they needed to, in my opinion. They needed another winger and they didn't get it. Especially after losing Pepe, they look a little bit light on the right wing position. They needed another midfielder, centre mid desperately, and you see now with the injury crisis, it could affect them a lot. And they went in for Douglas Rees on deadline. They should have, they should, they should have seen this coming from miles away. Um, we could all see that we need another centre mid, and maybe a little bit light on right back. However, I think for that reason, I put them at decent. I just think the impact of Aces and Injinko. I mean, if they didn't sign those two, or those two didn't look as good, it might be average or maybe even poor. But because those two are looking great. I'm it bumps him up to decent. Wolverhampton Wanderers next. And they've signed Mateus Nunes from Sporting, which I did not expect him to go there. Fantastic signing. Gonzalo Guedes paid a little bit too much for him, in my opinion. Nathan Collins, Sase Klajic as well, and Triore on loan. Uh, they got rid of Gibbs White for good fee, I think. Dendonka, Lee Bolly, Marcal, Roman Size, got a Cody. So they lost a lot of key players, but it brought in a lot of good, young, talented players. Matthias Nunes, Sasa Kalajic, Gonzalo Guedes, Nathan Collins, these guys. Again, in the future, I reckon if they perform well, they can sell up for a good fee. That will help them a lot. I think. It's probably a decent or very good. I will go for decent simply because they lost a lot of depth and players. Um, but the players they did bring in were very, very good players. Next, we'll go to Man City. And this is the team which I think have won the transfer window. Man City obviously signed Erling Haaland. 
was so cheap, 54 million. And I mean, his impact has been immense. Calvin Phillips, good backup for Rodri. They got a backup centre back in Akanji, backup left back in Sergio Gomez as well. Now, while they lost Sterling and Jesus and Zinchenko to rivals in the Brent, which I think is a bit of a mistake, they brought in Julian Alvarez to replace Jesus and Sterling, who looks incredible as well. Um, I was tempted to, I guess, drop them down. Well, they would still be an incredible, but put one of these as the winner. But I think the fact that Alvarez has come in and put an impact, Haaland has had a huge impact. And the fact that they've got cover in Phillips and Sergio Gomez has to be incredible for me. They definitely, for me, have won the transfer window this year. Everton, they've signed Omana, who looks fantastic, by the way. Um, Dwight McNeil, Neil Mope, James Garner, which I did not expect them to do. Good signing. Idris Gay, James Dolkowski, Ruben Van Aklo, Connor Cody as well. He got the sold Richardson, but I think they got good money for him. Um, and then they got rid of Deadwood, the likes of Deli Ali, Andre Gomez, Andre Kenny, Jack Dawson. They've been dealt. I think it was probably very good, maybe. Yeah, I put it very good. Let's go to this board because no one's going in there. Um, very good, I think, for Everton. They've bolstered that midfield superbly, bringing in Onana, Garner, and Idris Gay. They needed that midfield to be bolstered. I think they maybe could have done a little bit more in attack. They still, I don't see too many goals from the attack, despite bringing in Moby and Dwight McNeil. They will add something, but I don't think they'll add too many goals, especially after losing Calvin, um, sorry, Richardson. Connor Cody and James Dorkowski adds huge experience at centre-back. 